So we all take research for granted. Families do, doctors do. We, we take for granted it. We're going we're to do things based on research. But for millennia, there was no research. And people, treatments were really based on somebody's idea. Scoliosis has been known as a disease or as a problem for, for centuries. It was dis discussed by Hippocrates. And treatments for scoliosis were things like this. And I'm sure that nobody asked that person what they thought was the outcome of their treatment. And I'm sure that there was nobody going around surveying all the different people who were treated like this to find out how they turned out. There was no research. It was basically this person's idea, and they did it. And that was the treatment for, decades, for centuries. In the 1800s, this guy came up with this, this idea for the treatment, and I'm sure he didn't ask that person he was treating what her outcome was, and he didn't go around and collect data on all the different people who went through this treatment. He just basically did it and uh, probably enjoyed it. In the early 20th century, there was the evolution of treating people in casts, and they would put them on these tables and stretch them and put these casts on them, and they thought, wow, we're really doing a great job. We're really treating the scoliosis. But they really, nobody ever really looked at it. They didn't find out what happens after you do these casts you know, five years later. It was just they put the cast on, and okay, we fixed it, and that was their research. In the 1960s was really when everything's changed. That was when Dr. Harrington, as you heard earlier, came up with this new type of instrumentation. And he was the first one to start to report on his results. Coincidentally, at that, around the same time, the Scoliosis Research was, Society was begun. Because they thought, we have all this new information, all this new research. We have to, find, we have to talk about it. And after the first meeting, I know one of the doctors who was there, he said, we, we talked and at the end of the meeting, somebody said, well, that's it. What are we going to do next year? <laughs> we figured it all out. Well, not so. Actually, they just started. And it's that research that started since then that's really driven us all forward. And it's articles like this. Uh, what are patient, parents and patients concerned about, which doctors would never have thought about? You know, what, what's the long-term prognosis in scoliosis? In the uh, 1990s, a group of surgeons got together and decided we, they really wanted to do research in a systematic way. They formed the HARM study group, and subsequently they formed the, the Setting Scoliosis Straight Foundation to, to fund that research. And this group of surgeons who works off, feeds off each other and really encourages each other and give, bounces ideas around each other, have really been responsible for a lot of the important innovations in research. There was an article that recently published like a few years ago that said, the 100 classic papers of pediatric orthopedic surgery, you know, one of the best 100 papers on treating children's orthopedics, of those 100, 21 of those papers were on spine. Of those 21 pa papers over almost 60 years, seven of the 21 classic papers were by members of the HARM study group only in the last, what, 20 years that they've been writing. So the, the effect of having all these doctors and working together, all these researchers, working with patients to, to develop new treatment options, it's just been incredible, and it really has accelerated the treatment uh, over the decades. So, in, in finally, in, in sort of wrapping up, you know, we'd, we'd still be doing this, you know, all these years later, if it wasn't for research and all the people who were interested in helping us and working together with us to develop better outcomes for all of you. Thank you.